A 50-year-old Slovene Argentinian, Father Pedro, is known to all Madagascans. He is celebrated in verse and can even perform miracles. As Mother Teresa had once done, Pedro too has grown into the heart of those living on the far edge of society. He has received the highest international awards and is one of the most likely candidates for the Nobel Prize. He was 22 when he first came to the island. When I saw the misery of these people, it almost tore my heart apart, says Father Opeka. This is injustice. He couldn't look the other way, and he didn't. Although he was penniless himself, he thought, God's justice is on our side. If man's salvation is in question, one cannot stay indifferent. He believed that a mission station should be the house of people. Father Pedro thought that many gospels overemphasize what one should not do or God would punish them. How little they are human and how little we are sometimes man. If I were hungry, he says, I'd be grateful if somebody gave me a slice of bread or some clothes, or if someone helped me if I were ill, I would be happy. Therefore, I need to help others. Christian faith is love. The government has written these people and their problems off, but Pedro Opeka didn't just idly stand there. He established Akamasu, a humanitarian association, which means good friends. Joined hands and strong will can move mountains. Even modest means, if they're put to good use, can help. Father Pedro is trying to make state authorities realize that many social problems can be solved this way. Pedro Opeca doesn't want any gifts or alms. For him, having equal opportunities doesn't mean giving everybody a cup of rice, but finding jobs for the unemployed. The best way to fight poverty is to provide work. Only so can social security and stability be secured. Father Pedro has received a number of international awards. He believes they are recognition to each and every garbage man who has fought his way out of the dump. I'm only an instrument in God's hands. This strength is not my own. Everybody has it, for God has given it to everyone. We just don't want to use it because we are too idle, and that's why we are losing it he says. For Pedro Peca, it is the first and foremost task to help these people driven to the edge of society. To give them more self-respect through a gradual process and teach them fundamental human values. He wanted to be a priest among the poorest. There he is. The richness of good is love. Right from the start, Father Matteo envisioned the community and dialogue not merely as a structure, but above all as an intense human experience. A community where people are welcomed and loved and where each participant has the opportunity to rediscover his own identity, which has been fragmented or destroyed by previous painful experiences. The success of the initial community and dialogue led little by little to the opening of 16 residential centers for men and women, aimed at rehabilitation and maturation, helping people begin a complete new way of life. Today, these include a center where AIDS patients live in a family setting, a detox center and a center for reintegration into society and work. In 2004, at the request of a mother whose son was a drug addict in Peru, Father Mateo responded by sending some workers to start up a new center. He was then asked to open up two other centers in Colombia and in Georgia. The challenge for the community has not been merely to open new centers, but to offer a complete human experience, to give others hope 
and a desire for a full life, an intense, demanding issue. The community and dialogue makes a genuine commitment to respond to the various needs of those who find themselves in the direst difficulties and who might be tempted to give in to despair. The focus is not just on problems like dependence on drugs and alcohol or like the difficulties experienced by ex-prisoners and street people or by those who have psychological problems. While doctors, psychiatrists, psychologists, and other professionals are necessarily involved in helping, the human person always remains at the center of the community in dialogue. The human person is, in his essence, unique. Precisely for that reason, all are welcomed into the community, even at the most negative moments in life, when they seem beaten down and are experiencing great difficulties. The community believes that the dignity of the human person surpasses all such difficulties. Each person is encouraged not to be afraid of his own problems, and each is provided with instruments to help him grow in self-knowledge and to mature authentically as a human person so that the positive gifts which each person possesses might emerge. Since 1976, the Roadway Pastoral Ministry has been functioning on the Brazilian roads. This is a service of the Roman Catholic Church to the people on the road. This ministry, which is taking place on the highways of Brazil, is the only one of its kind in the world. This ministry was able to be developed because over the years, the team has been able to rely on the services of many people. The priests involved in this ministry travel the roads of the majority of the Brazilian states. Amapa, Amazonas, and Roromea are the only exceptions. The team is composed of missionaries who are members of the Curiba province. Father Mario has been working since 1976. Father Germano, 1996 to the present. Father Miguel, 1993 to the present. Each year, in the course of 240 days, their trucks travel taking them to approximately 7,000 gas stations. They celebrate the Eucharist for truck drivers in more than 1,600 places. The team has three trucks with chapels. The chapels are installed inside their trailers. When the back door of the trailer is open, the altar, loudspeakers, microphones, song sheets, and other materials that have been prepared for religious purposes become visible and available for use. The missionaries celebrate the Eucharist and provide other pastoral services gratuitously. The missionaries spread devotion to Our Lady of the Wayside by distributing at the conclusion of the various celebrations holy cards, decals, and posters with the image of the Virgin as well as rosaries. The original painting of Our Lady of the Wayside can be found in the Jesuit Parish Church 
called the Gesù, located in Rome, Italy. And I congratulate the University of St. John's for recognizing this so quickly to go outside the campus and be with them and bring them inside. I come here representing the inaugural microloan class program. Our mission is three-pronged, to contribute to the alleviation of poverty in the most under-resourced regions of the globe and to simultaneously raise awareness through education among the student population because we do have the power, the transformational power of changing the world. Let's trust in that. Yeah, the collaborative nature of Visa is really its greatest strength, I think. The mission of the university is captured in, in Visa. And that's what I'm really concerned about is I don't want to analyze anymore why the poor are poor. I want to make the poor not poor. The real beauty of Visa is its interdisciplinary nature and the building blocks, um, academic service learning, which will engage our entire student body. The Oz and M scholars, who are going to be an army of scholars, directed to searching out the causes of poverty and promoting short and long-term solutions. And really what we try to do in academic service learning is enhance uh, the learning experience through service in the community. So the students would work in the community, uh, sometimes in, in general terms or in, in general coursework. Where well, they had the opportunity to not take, even take a course, which was theories of poverty, but they were able to work at a school with underprivileged individuals. They were trained in robotics, they were trained in literacy, and they were trained in Tibbetts, which is a mathematics game. Drawn to serve the poor, that's wonderful. If we can move them forward to not only serve the poor, but to recognize they have to do it in a clever, organized way so that they can actually move the poor forward, that's even better. Because then you've actually truly made a difference in the world, not just your world, but the world of others. And that's really what we're after. It's extremely important for us to continue to drive home the nature and the necessity of interdisciplinary approaches and encourage faculty to do that. Um, and so that's, that's the difference. Truly Vincentian and truly enhanced with the Catholic social teaching, but they'll also be educated, critical thinkers that know how to solve problems and move people forward, no matter if they are doctors, lawyers, accountants, or teachers. That's the goal. Visa, as it is today, isn't the way that it was in September as we began to put it together. And it's not going to be what it will be 10 years from now when we see Visa and all the kind of ways in which it has successfully become part of our university and, and the way in which we live the Vincentian charism. So, I said, why not? For the people of Payatas, this dump site has long been their source of life, but it soon shattered all of their dreams. Some say that to live by a dump site is to live on the edge. Death may come anytime, especially during a heavy downpour. But now they have left this dangerous place to take the road to Bagong Silangan. This is where they will start anew. Upon reaching their new home, they immediately clean the house they have long hoped for. How did this come about? How were they able to change the course of their lives? The answer lies here. It all started with some loose change. The young and the old all make an effort to save enough for a better future. They are the poorest of the poor, forced to make a living out of garbage. Local associations under the Homeless People's Federation of the Philippines encourage their members to save. 
The savings eventually help them secure better homes, away from dangerous places like dump sites, river banks, and shorelines, and along bridges, highways, and railroad tracks. The Homeless People's Federation of the Philippines, or HPFP, has six savings programs. The compulsory savings program is for those who wish to avail of the business and family loans. The voluntary savings program allows one to withdraw his savings in times of need. The land and housing program assists in shelter and land acquisition, while the health insurance, mortuary fund, and urban poor development fund are for the community's needs. Under the program, the people are also taught to handle their community's needs and manage their finances. The amount may seem small, but once put together, their savings are substantial. This allows them to negotiate for their dream land. They know it won't be easy, but they are all in this together. Many of them are actively involved in building houses that they can afford. Today, thousands of Federation members are scouting for lots, arranging land titles, and acquiring land.